Hi, it's Dwyer. Keepingitfree.blogspot.com, a free financial blog. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free sports forecasting blog. Today is Sunday, March the 29th, 2020. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a quote from Dr. Fossey's co-authored report. It's recent in the New England Journal of Medicine. Right, you may have seen Dr. Anthony Fossey. He's supposed to be a coronavirus expert. He's been um, holding court on several news outlets explaining to us what's going on, etc. Right? Well, here's the quote. If one assumes that the number of asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic cases is several times as high as the number of reported cases, the case fatality rate may be considerably less than 1%. This suggests that the overall clinical consequences of COVID-19 may ultimately be more akin to those of a severe seasonal influenza, which has a case fatality rate of approximately one-tenth of one percent, or a pandemic influenza similar to those in 1957 and 1968, rather than a disease similar to SARS or MERS, which have had case fatality rates of 9 to 10 percent and 36 percent, respectively. Now, what I want people to do is to Google the 1957 H2N2 flu pandemic. One will find out that 70,000 people died in the United States. 70,000. Worldwide, there were up to 2 million deaths. You know, my father never told me that there was a societal lockdown, an economic lockdown in 1957 that greatly increased the likelihood of the world economy being plunged into a global depression. Understand, these numbers are at least on par. In fact, they exceed COVID-19's damage. But yet, we remember 1957 for a great Chevrolet. Dwight Eisenhower did not pull the economy from under us, nor did he pull our civil liberties. The 1968 Hong Kong flu pandemic was even worse. It originated in China in July of 1968, and worldwide it caused up to 4 million deaths. 4 million deaths. But yet, while 1968 is remembered for many things, right? Social unrest in America, a very contentious 1968 Democratic Party convention in Chicago, protesters left and right. Think about it. People were still allowed to protest. They were allowed to hit the streets. They were allowed to be a free people in a free country. They weren't being threatened with fines for going outside their homes. They weren't limited to their homes. They weren't locked down like we are right now. 
So isn't it an outrage to hear that experts like Dr. Fossey themselves at a time when they're taking away our civil liberties, they're endangering our standard of living, they're exponentially increasing the odds of a global depression They're spending your kids' money to the tune of more than $2 trillion on so-called emergency bills that includes funding for the arts. Isn't it amazing that Dr. Fossey doesn't even know today, doesn't even know in late March 2020, whether or not this coronavirus is worse than the 1957 or 1968 flu pandemics. So let's take advantage of the interactivity of YouTube here, right? You have an opportunity in the comment section of this video to post your thoughts on why this time we decided to Limit everyone's civil liberties. This time, without adequate information about whether this COVID-19 even has a mortality rate that's out of line with the 1957 and 1968 flu pandemics, right? Why this time was different. Why this time they had to not only tell you that you couldn't leave your house, right? Come up with social distancing, pretty much killing the restaurant sector. They had to come up with an unprecedented stimulus package as if there, there's proof in history that such stimulus packages work. Understand, in the 20th century, the last century we had, Warren G. Harding stops the 1920 depression by cutting government spending. Somehow we've decided not to follow that example. Instead, we're following one where the depression, we'll call it the Herbert Hoover FDR depression, lasts more than a decade. There isn't even sufficient discussion in Washington where members of the House have to go on record with their votes. Right? Why is this time different, folks? Why are your civil liberties viewed so lightly by government? that they are willing to take them away from you without even knowing whether COVID-19 is worse than the 57 or 68 flu pandemics. In my opinion, this is an outrage. Why didn't the President of the United States advise America of the 1957 and 1968 flu pandemics? Why didn't the President of the United States tell us that millions of people left Wuhan, literally left Wuhan, once they realized the Chinese government was about to lock down the city? Right, folks, the coronavirus is supposed to be highly contagious. Understand, for every Boris Johnson or James Dolan who gets the coronavirus, that tells you that many people around them had it. That the exposure rate to the coronavirus could be incredibly high and that many people could be, as Fossey himself recently wrote, asymptomatic. 
So shouldn't the President of the United States have said, until we determine that this flu is different than prior flu pandemics, until we determine that the mortality rate is so much greater than past flu pandemics that it warrants us taking away your civil liberties. Instead of the president protecting our civil liberties and our economy, indicating to Congress that, look, if you're going to try to take away the civil liberties of the American people, we're going to have to have not a silent vote with some nonsensical, ineffective stimulus that's not going to work, but a real discussion on why we need to shut down the hospitality sector of the United States, why we have to keep citizens in their house. Sadly, we didn't get that performance from the President of the United States. Quite frankly, we didn't get that performance from members of the Senate. We didn't get that performance from most of the members of the House. I'll give the one rep who stood up a lot of admiration, right? Unfortunately, no one else did in the House. So what we have now is a dying economy. Could they have killed GDP faster? We have a dying economy. Folks, we have civil liberties being trampled upon. Right? We have a country that's gone through a revolutionary war. A war of 1812. A civil war. We have a, con a constitution that's cherished. Where we actively discuss amendments. Things like the Bill of Rights other amendments. We talk about the right to bear arms. Where was the discussion here? As you watch this video, are you convinced that COVID-19 is worse than the 1957 flu pandemic or the 1968 flu pandemic? Keep in mind, both killed more than a million people. So yes, I'm upset. I'm livid. I feel that our elected officials have let us down. Right? If you think that a virus with a low mortality rate is dangerous, go out there and try years of poverty. Who remembers the Great Depression? with any kind of good feeling and thought that we'd want to repeat that. Just imagine the people who could be put at risk by social unrest caused by huge unemployment. Haven't we already had the largest number of jobless claims ever? On my financial blog, keeping it free.blogspot.com, I have a piece that indicates that pension funds have lost more than a trillion dollars because of this economic downturn. How many years of misery for pension fund beneficiaries is that going to cause in their retirement years? So, one man's opinion, we've had a ridiculous overreaction with very little evidence. Right? I see a lot of academic-looking people like Dr. Fossey on TV. And he doesn't even know what the mortality rate is for the virus that they've shut down. Not just the economy, but our civil liberties over. It's an outrage. I hope to hear from you in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.